We're live from the central regional capital of Cape Coast. That's the venue for the week 12 encounter of the ongoing 2019-2020 Ghana Premier League between Cape Coast Sebusia Mysterious Dwarfs and Inter Allies Football Club. As a game, Dwarfs would want to really get the results going their way. They stayed at this venue last week and lost to Star Madrid in the FA Cup. Same as Inter Allies, they lost to Legon Cities on Monday in the FA Cup. My name is Nana Dakwa Jesse, and I'm here with Sitio Fred Astrid Philip. We are your commentators for this afternoon's game from the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. It's March the 12th of the Ghana Premier League, and Dwarfs, the fans do not disappoint. They turn up in their numbers, they are passionate about the team, but they must be worried about where the team currently lies on the league log. They lie 17th, just one place above Kim Faisal, who languished at the bottom of the log. It's not looking good for them on the league log. It's not looking good for them in the league log. And this is a, a big game. Both teams will be looking to bounce back to winning ways after that defeat in the FA Cup game for them. But this is the real business now for these clubs. The league, the quest to survive uh, the relegation battle. And for these fans, they know that they have to back their team. They have to be there for the team and encourage them and give them all the support that they would need in wanting to stay up in the top flight division. So this is Dwarfs. Who are at home and they would have to be taking the game to allies but allies we've seen throughout this season that they've got some very brilliant attacking play and that is where we, what we are expecting two sides will be attacking from start to finish so both teams as expected of them they've made wholesale changes to the teams that played in the fa cup it's about 90 percent of the team that has been changed for this afternoon's game, it tells you the importance they have attached to this Premier League duel. Picking up the points will ensure by the end of the first round, they know what approach they will be going into the second round of the league with. And Kruma Kosa is captain of the team. The responsibility is on his shoulders to carry this team along. So Frank Asinki, not too sure what he's trying to tell Asso. He's established himself as one of the best central defenders for this entire life team since he came. Again, if there's any man to watch in this game, it will be Victorian at the bio, the top scorer of the Premier League, and for my money, the best player in the Premier League. Yeah, an exciting player to watch. He gives you the goals, he gives you the tricks. It sets his teammates up as well, and there's plenty to his game that the fans can enjoy. And you know, for places that he's been, even the away fans enjoy watching him play. There's been some confusion in the tunnel between the two sets of teams, that of Intalize and that of Ebusnad Dwarf. So you can see some fans of Dwarfs in the tunnel right now. Not too sure what has accounted for, you know. The verbal exchanges out there because I saw at the bio furiously reacting to somebody out there. The game hasn't even started and the battle lines have been has been done already. These are not two great clubs in terms of following and in terms of the pedigree, but already it looks like it's a tension game. Professor Minta, former psychologist of the Black Stars of Ghana. He also coached Ebusnyad Dwarf. He's always at the stadium when he's in town to give his support to this team. One of the finest technical brains in the central region and Ghana at large. He's also a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Very colorful supporters, Ebusnyad Dwarfs. Unmistakable identity, green and yellow.
So the two teams emerges out of the tunnel onto the pitch for this game here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. It's a Busia Dwarves against Inter Allies. So there they go, exchange of pleasantries. At the bio, is fired up. He's so furious. Yeah. You don't want to get him angry. It could be a ploy to get him distracted. So already, some fans of dwarves have just walked up to us at the commentary position and asking us what jersey numbers at the bio where I mean and that is what the league is all about we've always spoken about the quality of players so they, that when we have to watch absolutely when you have quality players and talent in the league people go to the stadium to watch them I mean he's not a Dwarfs player but fans are coming through because they've heard that the bio has been performing miracles and hopefully today it doesn't disappoint them toss of coin right so and Kruma Kosa wins the toss. He gets to choose where Dwarfs will play from. In Tarlai, to do the kickoff. Our center referee is Musa Mubarik. He's from Boga. He's assisted by Halil Al Hassan. And then Alex Osam. Our fourth referee is Ms. Ba Mohammed. All four officials are from the northern part of Ghana. So I told you earlier on, they've made nine changes to the team that lost against Star Madrid on penalties in the MTN FA Cup. They are coming in with a 4-4-2 formation with Martin Chebua and Abubakar Said leading the attack. Jacob Aperitum plays from the left-hand side of the midfield with Michael Asama playing from the right. A very attacking side. Very attacking side. It's lovely to see it, yeah. Moving around the stadium to applaud the fans and thank them for coming to support. Entire life have equally done wholesale changes to the team that lost 3-0 to Legon City. So you see Adebayo returns, Samuel Ama returns, Paul Abanga, he played in that game. That's Richard Aqua returns, Frank Kasinki, he played in that game against Legon City, so he keeps his place in that squad. Goalkeeper Augustus Oforinha also drops for Razak, for Gideon Heinkraft to take his place. So the two coaches, Tony Loco is head coach, and Ericsson is the Henrik is assistant, is a technical director actually. He was brought into the entire team by their partners, Capelli, for capacity building and youth football development. And so far, his appearance on the scene has really transformed this entire team. Yeah, he has. I mean, since Henry coming Peters. through, the players some decent results, and their style of play has changed. Game underway, Mubarak whistles and Adebayo wants to take matters into his own hands. This early stages, there he goes. Aqua, Adebayo. He's brought down, game on, no free kick for Adebayo. Right there, Adebayo wants to make that impression on the game and tell, get his teammates to follow suit. I mean, it's a captain who wants to lead by example as well. And they have to keep an eye on him, it's dangerous. So Dwarfs in their traditional green and yellow outfits and in Tala is playing their all white outfits here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. So first free kick of the afternoon. 
going the way of its allies. Fadi Bryan delivery out by Bodo. Richard Aquas attempt flies over and goes away for a goal kick to Abu Sinan Dwarfs. have applauded the effort. Some are equally disappointed in Seydou Abubakari. He already has four goals in the Premier League and so you can't take anything away from him. Yeah, he wasn't shy of shooting at that moment. Just shifted the ball to his left foot and tried to shoot. Just couldn't get uh, the power in that. Lovely play here is Amad. Amad with a power drive. Good save from goalkeeper Razak of Dwarves. And ball doesn't go outside. Here is Alex Asso for Intala. Ben Swan in. At the bell close up, he didn't have a touch. And Richard Aqua, he had a final touch as a goal kick. Yeah, but then what a, an attacking move there by Allies. Lovely spin around his man and all over the place. Nobody close in on him. So much space to get a shot away. Looking for Daswell at full strength to get something on it. Paris is away, but it's kept in play again by Asso. And the cross coming in on the far post. Nobody really doing the connection. That is. Great start by Interlice. Pushing on the path of Fadi Brian. Free kick for Ebusu and Dwarfs. If you just joined us, this is our coverage of week 12 of the Ghana Premier League from the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. It's Ebusu and Dwarfs, the home side, up against Interlice. Michael Ohina Samoa trying to put some pressure on Fadi Brian. The father's yeah. going down with uh, a little. You know, indicating that he's feeling his ankle a bit. I don't know if it was self-inflicted or something serious. I'm not sure it's anything that is uh, serious that I will see from this angle. This is where he's trying to win the ball from his attacking counterpart. Right there, steps a little bit. He's not deliberate, nothing deliberate in there, but he still felt his boots right on that ankle. Fadun, good. He's picked up the ball to effect the throwing, so no problems for inter allies. Aqua. Adebayo nearly stole that one. Here is Dennis Kosa. Abuna Aba Jr. right in the middle of the park. Sends it through one. Free kick. Good decision. Martin Cheboa. Asinki. And Enes Edu must keep an eye on him. Abu Naba goes for the short one. Here is Mark Aqua. He gives away possession so cheekly. Alex Asso. Samuel Ama can't go past his marker. Talais are stepping out of the block so confidently. And Abanga gets to Adebayo. Adwaso without the storm and get the ball away. Here is Abu Naba. Chihuahua loses the challenge to Fad Ibrahim. Love the play from Fad. And it's done so sends one in. Here is Aprichu. Abu Naba. Aqua. Good play from Dwarves. It wasn't a good cross. Kosa. Abu Naba. Kodo. 
Simon Mate. His brother was in the Diana team that beat Juice yesterday. Abu Naba switches lovely to Aprichum. But eventually, Richard Aqua gets the ball away. Yeah, that was lovely passing there by Dwarves. Stringing some passes together right from defense through to midfield. You can see the fans, they're applauding them. They have to keep the ball and make uh, Intalais work for it. But Intalais laugh or they are dangerous when they play or when they have the ball. Michael Ohine has somehow with a lovely pass to Simon Mate. Back to Ohine. He returns it to Mate. Unable to go past Fadi Brian. Fad yeah. That was great defending there by Fadi. To deal with. Absolutely. Great defending by Fadi Brian. For one moment, he thought he was beaten to that pass. He never really saw that he was had a chance to get to it, but he does well to recover and then nick it away. That was the foul on King Man. These two teams would love to keep the possession and deny each other from it. The midfield battle really would matter in this game. It really would. You know, Abuga and Abanga up against Mark Akwa and Asamoah. Interesting. Abu Naba takes matters into his hands. Here is Michael Asamoah. Seydou Abu Bakari didn't time his run. Awkward bounce on his foot. Aqua. Kosa. Aprichum. Up against Aqua. Free kick for Dwarfs. And Aqua is livid. He thinks it was a legitimate tackle. Maybe from him, but not from the others in and around him. Three bodies around Aprichum trying to go through them. And he won it. He won the ball, but. The tackle coming in, in behind him from Felix Abuska is where the referee sees and calls it for a foul. Henrik Peters up on his feet. He knows the danger this free kick can pose. Dennis Kosa head, is headed away by Asinki. Allies are twelfth on the league log with 14 points from 11 games, and Dwarves they are 17th on the log. It doesn't look good for them. Three games and a draw, three wins and a draw makes up for 10 points from 11 games. That's some awful statistics for them. Awful, really awful. Let me look at some of the games they've won. I mean, they are shocking because they beat the Diana Stars. Yes, sir. But, but three goals would beat Dreams FC as well here. Yeah. You know, it's about consistency, and if they are confident enough, they have to keep their concentration going because sometimes they switch off, and that is where they are punished. If they can keep their concentration going for 90 minutes, they should be accumulating more points than they have already. Richard Aqua, Victoria Nadebayo, straight to Razak. It's Adebayo again. Again, in the space that he has, take a look at this touch. He turns, has all the time in the world and space to shift that ball to his favorite left foot and take that shot. They have to be closing down on him and making sure he doesn't have enough time and space to do what he does best. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. Dwarf lost to Mediama 3-1 here, but they beat Adriana by the same margin here. Unfortunately, they lost to Liberty, won against Carilla and Dreams, like Sicho Riley said. So. They've tested all sort of results at home. Here is Adebayo with a killer inside Samuel Ama's header, and it goes over the top as a goal kick. Yeah, a touch too high for Ama. But then you question Max about the defending there by Dwarfs. Nobody picking up Ama, who was left all on his own and left unmarked. So much space all on his own, except that the ball was a touch too high for him. They are living dangerously here, Dwarfs. It's 10 minutes in Cape Coast, it's Dwarfs 0 and Taala is 0. Oh. 
Muskars lost possession to Abu Naba. Aqua Michael Ohina Samoa looking for options. He finds Simon Mate. Poor touch from Simon Mate. Simon Mate, he's, he has relative experience from the Ghanaian Premier League. He's played for Santi Kotoko and he's playing against one of his former sides, Inter Allies. Anafo and Prince Podo have a job to do in keeping that close eye on Adebayo. He gave him an inch. Yeah. It's going to be a problem for you. Fat sends a cross in. Abuna Abbas touch. Seydou Abubakari. Lovely switch to Aprichum. Looks to have handled the ball. Referee waste play on. And Aqua will pounce on that and take advantage. Adebayo. Oh, brilliant skill. That reminds me so much of how he tore Brekum Chelsea apart in Brekum some three weeks ago. He's not at home, he's away from home, but anytime he's on the ball, just feel the atmosphere. People are expecting something to, magical to happen. And it's great to see. You know, it's for the good for the league, the good for the league, and uh, that fans really can come to the stadium and enjoy quality football from quality players like Adebayo. Abuska, Samuel Ama, ball falls to Abuska again. Adebayo puts in Aqua, good drive from him. And Anafo had to block that one out for a corner kick. That was promising from Entalize. For a moment, you would have thought that Dwarf stopped playing. It looks like they were expecting a whistle from the referee, which was never coming. Adebayo will take up the responsibility for the corner kick. It's fisted away by Razak. Only as far as Richard Aqua. Adebayo. Asking so much questions of Razak Isa, the entire life sport man. Yeah, look at that's well in that situation because Adebayo's ball is coming right in front of him. It's just about to dip. But he does enough to get on it. There you see, ball dips right in front of him. But he gets his body in behind the ball and he clinches on the second, of, uh, second asking. Victorian at the bio. He doesn't stop scoring. Amas flick on straight to Anafu. Asinki goes to his goalkeeper. Here is Enes Tadu. So Ama flicks it on. Nobody to do the follow-up. Adebayo has decided to operate from the left-hand side instead of playing in the middle. Abu Bakari. Ohinia Samoa. Just on the edge of the box. Too many turns from Ohinia Samoa. It's already 15 minutes and it's Dwarf Zero in Tahala Zero in Cape Coast. It's 
Aqua up against Apertum. Decision goes in favor of Inter Allies. So back in the 2015 season, Inter Allies lost by three goals to one to Dwarfs, and that game was played at the Sudu Park where Dwarfs were prevented from playing their games by the club licensing board. Nicolas Jan, at the time the captain of the side, scored once. Samuel Quayson scored and Bright Lukman also got a goal. The only consolation that came from Allies was from Gokela Hoto and he's on the bench today. Good piece of skill from Marco Dennis Kosa. Approaching gives possession. Good play from Alex Asso brings in Aqua. Here's Adebayo. It's a clash of the captains. Up against Corsa. He goes past Corsa and tries one from a distance. But it's stopped by Anafu on the way. It won't trouble Issa Razak. Yeah, they won't trouble Issa Razak, but Adebayo, always difficult to mark, always difficult to deal with. And Corsa does well in that situation too. Block that one first attempt to dribble him. Adibao still manages to get on the boy and dribbles him eventually. Abanga switch. Adibao heads it down. Abuska. Felix Abuska tries this one from a distance. It's a goal kick. The 16 year old, not afraid to try his luck. Yeah. And so what, what do you see Dwarves doing here? It's making it difficult for them to get into the 18-yard box. But what they're not doing well is to close down the spaces in and around the 18-yard box where really allies have been looking dangerous. If they keep inviting them, they will be in trouble. Jerry Simo Mate. Abu Bakari, Michael Asamoa gets a return. Lovely pass to Simon Mate. Ball is blocked by Fadi Ibrahim. It's a corner kick for Dwarfs. In the 2016-17 season, Intalis lost at this venue by two goals to one. And in the truncated season of 2018, they lost by two goals to zero here. Corner taken. Nobody to do the connection for Dwarfs. Not been a happy ground for allies when they've come to Cape Coast. But the same story would have been said, or would have been told when they visited Tachima in 11 Wonders. They rewrote their scripts, they're beating them, and scoring three goals in Tachima. I'm sure the same story would have been said again when they visited Chelsea in Brekum. Again, they beat them by three goals to one. So they have the confidence that they can produce some very good results here today in Cape Coast. Ibrahim, that pass nearly troubled Asinki. It's 20 minutes already in Cape Coast. It's Dwarf zero, Inter Allies zero. Banga looking for Adebayo. There was a push from Adebayo on Anafu. Free kick for Dwarfs. <laughs> 
Seydou Abu Bakari is having a very difficult afternoon. He remains their top scorer, but his output has not been impressive so far. Yeah, it's looked a touch slow. There's a early part of the game. Felix Abuska could have guessed the ball away. Here is Adebayo, tries to play the one-two with Ama in that tight space. Pushing on a Samoa. That is a nasty challenge from Alex Asso. High boots, straight to the head of Mate. Dennis Cossa goes past his marker, finds opportunity, who sends the cross in. Cleared away by Asinki. That was close. Martin Chibuatot. He had put the ball at the back of the net. Well, that was a very teasing cross there by the skipper. Boy, he's coming. Aperitum actually sent the cross in. Looking past steps of his line, but he was never going to get there in time because the pace on the ball was teasing. It was somewhat slow. But Atribua does well to make that move to the near post. Just couldn't quite connect it to it cleanly. Just went inches wide. <laughs> and as Thompson, he has to lift the club up, and that responsibility is becoming difficult by the weeks. Here is Paula Banga. Switches to Richard Aqua. Aqua sends a low cross in. Elmina Sharks are up by one goal to zero in Accra against Hatsabok. And Kim Faisal are drawing in Brikum against Chelsea. Interesting results. Yeah, interesting results coming through. The Phobians down at home. That is where a lot of the fans have not been happy. The home performances have not been great and consistent enough. But there's still plenty minutes to play. However, it's Kim Faisal who are restored parity having gone down by a goal. And for Elmina Sharks, They'll be entertaining some good feelings because they already beat in Thailand at the same venue they are playing Hearts of Oak today. Absolutely. Felix Abuska switches looking for Alex Asso up against Mate. I'm sure Asso, Asso was still in the academies when Simon Mate was one of the best players for Intalis. And there he steps up to play against him and tries to pose some problems. Samuel Ama, the idea was good, but the technique in the execution let him down. Yeah, you could see what he was trying to do, just deal with this man as the shoulder, and kill the ball past him. Just creating that space and that angle right there. Receiving that ball, but lovely given, go there. Again, so slow to close down the spaces from dwarves, but just couldn't wrap his foot around the ball to the top corner.
Abuga to Abuska. He was trying to pick out his captain, but the Dwarf's captain instead gets the ball from the Interallies player. Aqua to Mate. He likes the drive to search forward and put in the crosses for Abubakari and Martin Chebua. Felix Abuska steps forward in confidence. Now he gets to Adebayo. Felix Abuska wants to search for Adebayo, is interested. He decides to go back to Abuga Desmond. Now, here is Richard Aqua. Felix Abuska. Samuel Ama with that audacious strike from that distance. Yeah, Dwarfs making it difficult for them to get into that 18 yard area of theirs. So they have to try those shots from range and they're going to come that way. Goalkeeper is going to be happy once the defense are blocking it. Aqua was trying to pick out Apritum, but Abuska will pick it up. He also loses possession unattentively. Chibua hands into Allies' possession. Again, Abuska's delivery goes to an opponent. The fans don't seem to be enjoying any urgency in the approach of Dwarfs towards goal. Yeah. Again, I feel the frustration around. Another setback for Look them. Look at the fans and the way they are reacting to this one as, you know, the amount of produce not able to, approach is not able to gather that ball. And some of the fans showing their displeasure in that. They want to see the urgency from the side. They want to see them push forward and force matters. It hasn't happened yet for them. A free kick for Inter Allies. Adebayo, he lops one to Samuel Ama. Anafu caught sleeping on that job. He does want to recover. Adebayo, he doesn't only score goals, he's good at winning tackles as well. Samuel Ama, his attempt goes over. It's a goal kick, not a bad attempt from the Inter Allies striker. Yeah. And that is the one thing that Interlies can feed on. Once Adebayo gives that ball away, everybody's now watching Adebayo because he's expecting him to give the ball back to him. Ama realizes that he has enough space in front of him and take the strike. He just doesn't get his body over the ball and boy is flying out uh, up and over the crossbar. It's 30 minutes in Cape Coast. Ebusia dwarfs zero, Interlies zero. Desmond Abuga. He's played the life in midfield alongside Abanga and then this young one, Felix. Again, he fails to pick out the bio. Richard Aqua. Well, how will he get up and go and fight back for that ball? That's a free kick, that's a foul. Well, the referee almost plays an advantage there, but 
For a second, nothing was going for Italians, and as soon as he, he put the whistle to his mouth, Adebayo made a very brilliant run. We wonder if that ball had stayed on for the advantage. What could have come out of that move? And that is the tackle, cynical one. Onama. Scored a courageous second goal in that 3-1 win over Brecum Chelsea the other time. Quite a confident striker. So there you see some fans of Kinsley Braille in the in the stands. But unfortunately, Kinsley is on the bench. They get to cheer him on when he steps into the game. Abuska to Aqua. Lost to sprint down the right. There the young chap goes. Just way too much touch on that ball. Rekum Chelsea have gone up by 2-1 against Kim Faisal. Hats of Oak still down by one goal. And Wafa, they're up by one against Ashanti Gold in Sogakope. But it's goalers between Liberty and Karela in Accra. So the Dwarf coach and his coach Thompson having some words for Mark Aqua. And he's a, an assistant headmaster at the Academy of Christ the King School. He's in charge of administration. And this is the second time I'm hearing about a headmaster coaching a Premier League side. You know about Kweku Dansu of, yeah. Kweku, of Bechem, Bechem United. United. Yeah, absolutely. So this is another headmaster coaching the Bishnia Dwarfs. And that's his assistant, Nana Pra. Coincidentally, the two of them have been working as coaches for the Central Regional Schools and Colleges team. And in 2016, they won the National Schools and Colleges Championship. The medical officer of Dwarves have a very funny look. He has a handkerchief wrapped around his nose, not too sure what he's trying to prevent. Dennis Kosa. Ball is dealt with by Asinki. Lucky Aqua, Adebayo was lurking around. Abu Naba is trying to pick up Chibua, but Fad Ibrahim does so to get the ball away. Abu Naba. Aqua. That wasn't the best option for Aqua. He created enough space for himself. I thought he could go for a power drive from that angle. Yeah, that's poor decision there by Aqua. You know, spinning around and turning the whole midfield around. You thought, there, I'm going to go for the far side. He didn't deceive everybody right from here. Just trying to find this man, but that pass was never on. And in the end, it looked funny. A shocking one. One of those players, Celastete, took to Tamale City from Liberty Professionals when he got the job. He never got to break into the Liberty Professionals first team. He had to sit for playing time in Tamale. When he got that, he became right for Premier League football, Aqua. Adebayo is stopped by Aqua again. Something off about Aqua's passing. I mean, just about three yard pass and it's kicking it in mid air. I thought that could have just been on, on turf. Could go for the carpet instead. Absolutely. Here is Abuska. Abanga. 
Richard Aqua. Very surprising right back. He plays with so much confidence, Aqua. So there you see, Simon Mate has swapped positions with Abunaba. Abunaba has moved to the right hand side of defense, and Simon Mate goes into the heart of the park. I'm sure, that is, I'm sure that's going to be temporary because Mate was then tracking. Someone Ama then now he's resumed this position because exactly the boy is away from the danger area. And it's lovely to see that one, one man steps out of his area and then fills in, in one place. Another player is intelligent enough to read it and just join the play and fit in. What is Tony Loco writing? Tactics. Okay. So Loco is rather asking one of his assistants to do the write-up for him. Alex Asu. The decision has been greeted with some huge outcry from the fans here at the Cape Coast Stadium. They disagree with Mubarak. Yep. Asu there just trying to go past Mubarak. Not too sure if he did anything wrong in there. Was right on his shoulder. You know, was his shoulder. It was as if he was swinging his arm across the face or the chest of his man. I mean, how else could he have defended that in that situation? So, the Tamale base, re the Boga base referee, he thought otherwise. And Intala is out of free kick. And Abanga will step forward. Adebayo! Repelled by goalkeeper Razak Isa. For once, I thought it effort. was going to be Abanga. It's a brilliant one. Never favored by the left footer. But then we are on the pitch. Anything is possible, isn't it? That's wall to get the ball over the wall and almost got the goalkeeper on his near post. Right there. Abanga looked like he was the one going to step in here. Adebayo just gets that one, fizzing to the near post. Goalkeeper that's wall to read the incoming danger. Step up. He got enough punch on it to take it away from danger. Here is Adebayo. Puts one two. Alex also was a shit late and Kodo gets the ball out. Here is Simon Mate. Martin Chibua. Michael Samuels pass to Chibua, and I think he will step in for the tackle. Chibua does well to keep it in play. Here is Michael Ohinea Samoa. Up against Dan Enes Edu. He does well to go back. Here is Aqua. Now in Tarlais. Have ideas of their own. And Abanga put one, two for Asso. Flag goes up. Asso is offside. Disappointed from Asso because he had all the time in the world to time that run well. But he knew that he was the likeliest to receive that pass, so he should have just timed that run. But again, Aqua and Midford looked very, very sloppy. Had a great opportunity to line it up and take the shot. His, his touch was too heavy. And that is how it allies broke away. But here again, I'm not sure this is offside. Also, really, to be fair to him, did well to check his run. Flag might have just gone up a bit earlier. So these are the Kingsley Bryan fans. Star time beautifully represented. <laughs> the all colors. You change your view. Change your view. I mean, I must take this opportunity to apologize to all our viewers um, over the technical issues that we experienced over the last two days on Adepa Channel, but it's been restored now and football can really be enjoyed now in HD. So, Ghana Premier League is live, clear and colored on today at Adepa TV and Max TV as well. Apologies accepted. Thank you. It's 40 minutes in Cape Coast, Dwarf 0 in Tyler 0.
Dwarfs just one place above Kim Faisal. Michael Ohina Samoa, here he goes. Michael Ohina Samoa. Michael, he's got himself to blame for this missed opportunity. Seidu, another wasted opportunity for Ibusuna Dwarfs. Was Michael trying to do the touch too many from him. I thought he had three opportunities that he could have let that fly. In the end, he took too many touches and lost the control of the ball. I mean, in the final third, you have to be decisive, you have to be quick in thinking and you know, decide what you want to do with the ball. He didn't in that moment. Alex Asu. Fadi Ibrahim. Asu. Abanga who fancy a shot. He goes past his marker on the weaker left foot. It goes agonizingly away for a goal kick to Dwarfs. Yeah. And that's what Dwarfs are, are doing well at preventing allies from getting into that box. And we've not seen Adebayo come close to the box. It's been a frustrating 42 minutes for Adebayo. Absolutely. Ama as well hasn't come close to the box because they are guiding that area so, so well. But again, the midfielders will have to double up and then press and close up on the runners when they are approaching that box so they don't have the space to shoot. It's one thing they've not done so well this afternoon. Victorian. Pass was meant for Fad Ibrahim. Took his eye off the ball a minute. Simon Martin has either ideas on where the decision of the referee should go. Felix Abuska. Samuel Ama, he's got the bio to his right. And the bio that was close. So if you give him these opportunities, he's gonna make you pay so dearly. Yep. He doesn't need to be in the box at the bio. He thought this pass was a heavy one for him, but what a lovely touch that was to set himself. And just killing that ball. The ball wasn't killing in time. It dipped well in time. Just wasn't killing in time to the far post. The goalkeeper was never gonna get to that one. Brilliant effort by Adebayo. Zach was always going to be beaten. Always. Always. Brilliant effort. First, that was beautiful to set himself up. I tell you what, other players are going to take three touches to control that one right. He did it with the first time of asking. Magnificent. Simon Mate tries a shot from a distance. It won't trouble. Goalkeeper Gideon Ahim Kraft for Ntalais. It's about Allies' fair shot on target. Asking questions now of so Allies, Allies the rotated goalkeepers, they brought in Apronti at certain periods. They've also brought in Augustus Oforinyako, who considered the three goals in that defeat against Legon Cities. He's not in the match they scored for today, and it's obvious. Those goals he considered. Yeah. So Martin now goes down with an injury. I'm not sure how that comes up, I'm sure that it's, it's a muzzle strain there. But it's back on his feet. So you get the indication that we might do two minutes of additional time here at the Cape Coast Stadium. 45 minutes up now. So confirmation, two minutes of additional time. I'm sure it's, it's allies that will go into the break, the happier side away from home, goalless. They've created a better chances. Here is Seydou Abukari against Fadi Ibrahim. Mark Aqua. Dennis Kossa. The Dwarfs captain wants to create space. Aperitum cuts in! End product. Just disappointing from Aperitum. I mean, it's about the first time Aperitum has Come close to the danger area. You know, there, he does well to take this touch, cut onto his right foot, just wasn't killing it. it was always rising. Showing from a lower tier side in Kumasi court. Stories at the bio, good save, Razaki sir. Pushing, that's a heavy push from Alex Aso, and that was needless. At the bio again, proving. He's a predator in chief. He really is. I think it was Podo who was trying to win that header. 
and there, as he hears that boy, he's sending it to the danger man, Ajibayo, just takes it on his chest and his, on his weaker foot, his right foot, he just lashes through it, and goalkeeper is not panicking. He's just studying that and that's well to get enough on that, because Samuel Ama was just lurking to feed on the rebound. Isara Zak scoring full marks, and I think he's fouled by Chimua, free kick. Like we've done one minute of the additional time, one more to go. Almost up now. Not be too surprised if referee Mubarak brings the first half to an end right here. So he has a firm grip of the whistle, he takes it to his mouth, and then he blows it. First half over. Entire lies have given a Bushnia dwarfs. A good run for their money, but it's this man, Issa Razak, who has prevented Adebayo from scoring. It's been an interesting first half. Great exchanges from both sides. Half-time score from the Cape Coast Stadium. Ebusnia Dwarfs 0, Inter Allies 0. Has to woke up the equalizer now. So, Inter Allies and... Dwarfs score a tough match day 12 at the Robert Mensah Stadium. Both teams exited the MTN FA Cup from the round of 32, from the round of 64. And early on, Samuel Ama got the save from goalkeeper Issa Razak. And there was more to say from the entire men yeah. for goalkeeper Issa Razak. Issa Razak has been Dwarfs' best player. The reason why the scoreline is as it is. Dwarfs have done well to contain them on the edge of the box, but in the rounded area that they leave those spaces for them to shoot. And anytime they've shot at goal, the goalkeeper has been incredible and in decent areas to save them. So Adebayo, again, he tried an attempt and he got the best from goalkeeper Razak Isa. Adebayo again. That's, that, that was a difficult one for the goalkeeper because it was just bouncing right in front of him, but he gets his body behind it. Makes a save. So look at this cross, awkward from Aprechum, but Chibua, he didn't have that punch and the decent touch enough. Yeah. I mean, it's a funny cross because he's not dropping to anybody in particular. It's Chibua who gambles to make that run and sees the ball coming. He doesn't get enough connection on it. Goalkeeper also does well to narrow the angle and make it tight for him. But awareness from Asinki. Look at Adebayo again calling Razak to duty and Razak always came up tops when yeah. he was called to duty. And it's a strange one from this range. You'd have thought that Abanga was favorite to shoot it. But Adebayo did. Again, Adebayo got this one from that awkward Kodo header and with a right-footed drive, again Razak scored full marks so it's been Adebayo and Inter Allies creating most of the chances and asking so much questions of the Dwarfs defense and goalkeeper halftime score here at the Cape Coast Stadium is a Boussouan Dwarfs zero Inter Allies zero fifty-one percent of the possession for Dwarfs five shots on goal for Inter Allies one corner apiece 10 fouls committed by Inter Allies. One offside apiece, no yellow cards. Half time score at the Cape Coast Stadium is Dwarfs 0, Inter Allies 0.
Welcome back to the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. We're getting ready for the commencement of the second half of this 12th week game of the Ghana Premier League 2019-2020 season between Cape Coast Ebusia Mysterious Duels and then Inter Allies. The first half ended goalless with Inter Allies creating the better of the scoring opportunities and they were the best team. But in terms of possession, Duels looked the dominant side but Inter Allies were positive throughout the first half. Back in the second half, I can imagine what approach is going to be from the two sides after Adebayo proved to be the tormentor in chief. Dwarves must be coming up with different ideas on the talisman. Absolutely, they have to be coming up with different ideas. I'm sure that they've done one thing right, like I kept saying during that first 45 minutes. They've kept them away from the danger area, which is the box. But then allies have proven that they don't really need to get into the box to trouble the defense and the goalkeeper. So they have to be closing in on them quickly. Otherwise, they could be staring at trouble. Mubarak signals the two teams into action for the second half. Abuska is trying to shy away from the foul he committed. So let's see. Yeah. That was a Costa big challenge. Away from me, and then he just. You know, leaves something little on him, but it can be painful sometimes. That that quick pain. I just he's shaking it off now. Felix Sabuska, Victorian Adebayo. No, 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 no. Paula Banga. Good work, die. Michael Ohine Samoa. The pressure has begun, mounting on Coach Thompson, Adebayo. Ama was looking for Alex Asso from that left side, and Asso does what to keep it in play. Then he comes up against Simon Mate. Mate does what to get the leg on that yeah, one. That's really well. You know. Kept Asso guessing and Asso didn't know where to go and Asso stick his leg out and gets it away. Abu Naba, that was a dangerous area to try dribbling your way out. Chibua was looking for Seidu Abukari, handball against the striker. Lovely work from Abuska. He's growing into a confident player. Adebayo! Good set. Adebayo again over the top. He doesn't miss opportunities like this, but you give all the credit to goalkeeper Issa Razak. Yeah. But this lovely skill here from midfield, right through the middle there. Adebayo takes this touch. It's the second touch that lets him down, but really, we'd have loved to have that ball on his left foot. The second time takes the ball to his right foot. Toe box the goalkeeper. Saves that one with his leg. And on the rebound, the ball is not dropping in time for Adebayo. He just couldn't get it in, down in time to connect to it. He does get the connection away, but it's over the bar. There. Not falling or dropping in time for him to hit it. But it's a rare, rare miss by Victoria Adebayo. The Nigerian international again. He goes across the face of the 18-yard box. Ama! Good save by Issa Razak again. It's now in Tarlais versus Issa Razak. Desmond Abuga. Richard Aqua. Adebayo. Slows down the pace. Was, Abuga was trying the spectacular. By that turn, it didn't work. Henry Peters must be impressed with how his charges have played in the last three minutes. Yeah, he'll be wondering as well why they are not in front of them. But they've got three massive chances to fall into Adebayo. But this is the man who is actually stopping all those balls from finding the back of the net. Adebayo again showing great skill and awareness to set up Ama. And the goalkeeper does what to rush off his line, Razak, and for blocks that shot. For a goalkeeper who has been at Liberty and Adriana Stars, he can't be a poor goalkeeper. Yeah. And it's proving why he's showing his top quality here today. He's 
Joseph been a Bechem United. Isa Razak, he's a journeyman as far as this Premier League is concerned. Yeah, we'd, love to, we'd love to see that one again as Adebayo beats his men and lay it off to Ama. It looked like it was a combination of Bodo and then Isa Razak stopping that one. Fad Ibrahim, he loses our possession to Kodo. Kodo does well to hang on, and the central defender will want to provide an assist for Chibua, but is cut out by Interallies. And as the Richard Aqua. Good skill from Desmona Buga. Interallies proving difficult for Duas to handle. And Aprechum finds Abubakari Seidu. But you don't want to get into allies and give them the freedom to get into their passing game. It's, it's what they love to do. And in the first half, Dwarves did well to stop it. But in the start of the second half, allies are passing really well. Aprechum, it's been a difficult afternoon for Aprechum. Yeah. His deliveries, but for the one in the first half, have not truly gone in for him. Good play from Aqua, end product, zero. But eventually, it's Seydou Abubakar trying to score from that angle, Seydou. Yeah. It's got to be serious. Well, we've seen them, them go in from this range, but you need something really special to be the goalkeeper from there. But there's the foul. You know, that referee pulls that one back for. Okay, there's that there's collision and lifts a bit over the top of the ball and right onto his, his foot. It can be very painful. I'll leave you a little dash on there, but if you look at Chabua and then uh, Seydou up front, they don't really fashion enough to get us an attacking force. They flag the supplies, they flag the support also from Mitchell. Poor delivery from Richard Aqua and Henry Peters will question him on that poor showing. The fans have started applauding. Dwarfs will be coming up with two substitutions, a double switch. They could bring them some double delights if they are lucky. Simon Mate with a power drive. He goes wayward, goal kick. Yeah, on his left foot. You don't really fancy him for that one, do you? Always rising. Martin. But it's enterprising, he's adventurous, he gets into these areas a lot of times as to the bodies that are committed forward. He played alongside Daniel Amate, Clifford Abouadje, Adamu Mohamed and the likes of Interallies when he was a second tier actually. There again you can see the frustration of few, the frustration from the fans. It's, it's, it's that, in the final third, that, that coercion between you know, Seydou and Chodeboa, that hasn't worked for them, that is frustrating them. And the two midfielders as well, Asamu and Aqua, have not really supported them enough. And Abu Jun, and Abu Junior, not really having a good game as well. So the front four, that ain't really happening. Michael Asamu, good stop from Ernest Edu. Poor pass. Felix Abuska. Abanga. Here is Alex Asso. Couldn't pick out Samuel Ama. So Ishmael Entry is called against Dreams. He will be stepping in. I don't be surprised if Aperture is sacrificed or Chebua. I mean, it could be anybody in the front four because they've all been poor, very poor. Fad Ibrahim went down from the challenge of Mate, but Mubarak waste play on. Alex Asso brought down by Seydou Abubakari, free kick for Inter Allies.
Ismalenti Goldfinch for Jacob Apretu. Albert Hammond. for Simon Mate. So they've held on to the second substitution. And we still have Dwarfs. Fadi Brahim's delivery dealt with awkwardly by Kodo. And Kodo was the one who missed the final penalty when Dwarfs lost to Star Madrid's 5-6 on penalties last weekend. That saw them exiting the FA Cup at the round of 64. Fadi Brahim's cross inside. Good header away by Anafu. Five minutes in Cape Coast. Dwarfs zero into Allies zero. McAquas pass for Dennis Cosa. Wasn't a difficult ball to pick Cosa. So Simon Mate is making way for Albert Hammond. So Abu Naba goes to the right side of defense to play from where Simon Mate was playing at. Yeah. Tactical switch. Yeah, so Abu then goes, switches into the position where Simamata was playing, which frees up the space now for the substitute Hammond to fill in the space on the right. Mate has got two assists in the Premier League. He assisted in that win over Adriana, provided Donko with that assist. And also provided Entry with an assist when he scored against Dreams FC. And Entry comes to replace him. Here is Entry. Cosa. McAqua! Not a bad attempt from the former Liberty man. And the fans were urging him to shoot. And he obliged. It's a decent effort from here, McAqua, but. You know, not going down or dipping in time to trouble the goalkeeper, always rising on this occasion. But, I mean, since those two substitutions, the energy then around the stadium is going to happen. Maybe it's what they needed. Fresh legs. Alex Abuska in his elements and he's causing problems for Ebusia Dwarfs. Here is Desmond Abuga. He gets the free kick. He was trying to force his way, knowing very well he was going to get a foul. Yeah, Asamoa pulls him down and there's a free kick in Anadebayo territory. Remember that in this very same range or territory, he did score when they played in Brekum. Oh, that is the challenge. This is the foul. Always a foul, Asamoa. Asamoa just couldn't stop him. Was powering through that midfield, and Asamoa just got his hand all around him, and a free kick in a very, very, very dangerous position with Adebayo standing right behind that. It's 58 minutes, and we are in an Adebayo territory. Is it going to be the Adebayo movement? We've witnessed several Adebayo movements in the Premier League. One that when he comes to mind is the Brekum game. It's a free kick for entire allies. <laughs> Mobaric whistles. Adebayo steps forward. Adebayo! Isarazak. He failed to make a first time save, but he made amends. That was great response by Isarazak. 
always difficult to get it on the first time, but reacts well to pick it up on the second time. Adebayo here, just scales it around the wall, low and always bouncing on that turf. Issa Razak couldn't gather it on the first time of asking, but rushes and dashes out of his line to gather it on the second time of asking. It has been sensational today for Dwarves. Ismail Enchi. Brilliant effort from Enchi. Enchi on the far side, nobody picking him up. And as I do slipping. So this touch was a poor one, really. Was taking the ball wide. It went wider than he would have wanted it. He still lashed that down one end. Tried to squeeze it into the near post. Difficult skill to do. Sixty minutes already, and it's dwarf zero in Tarlai zero. Yeah, you don't normally get too many exciting goalless games, but this game really has been very exciting, even though we've not had any goal yet. So it's obvious that Simon Mate got off the game because of this injury he sustained. Yeah. That's when he was doing well. It wasn't because he wasn't playing well. Yeah, I would have been surprised if it was because of his performance. But in that first half, he went down at some point and he carried on with the game. I'm, I'm not sure he, he could see out the 90 minutes, so he had to be sub subbed off for someone else to come in. What a time for the manager to do that because he's changed something in attack and they, look, they seem to have some new energy up front. Abu Naba was the creative enforcer back in the front man. Now he has to go to the right side. Some defensive duties up for him. He goes in with this cross. It's teasing. He's finally is cleared away by Adu. Not too sure what Podo wanted to do, but again, this should be a yellow card for Anafo. He won't go unpunished. Yellow card for the dwarf defender, Emmanuel Anafo. Yeah. It's the second time Podo Kodo's header has found Adebayo. There you see Kodo, not aware of where Adebayo is. Doesn't really get enough on that header. But here, you'd have thought from here, Anafu should be favorite to get into the ball. He delays a little bit, Adebayo just takes his leg, his leg out to get to the ball, and he's been brought down by Kodo. Anafu, I should say. And that is why he's been yellow carded. Anafu joined the Busunia Dwarfs at the commencement of the season from the Bekwai Youth Football Academy, and he's fitted in so well at the back. Here is Chibua. Martin Chibua. Frank Asinki with some good piece of defending. But again, Chibua didn't really make any effort. And that was so poor from Chibua. To let it work for him. Yeah. Lovely play from Hammond. And Abu Naba gets a corner for Dwarves. Yeah. I mean, Chibua, they had an opportunity. It was 1v1, but. Couldn't beat his man, not really, even with the pass. In those situations, they have to make it count, Dwarves, because they won't have many of those. When they have allies, their backs turned, they have to make it count. Abu Naba delivers. There was some pushing in the box. Substitution. Alex also makes way for Mohamed Zakari. A like for like substitution. Like for like, yeah. I mean, also had a great game today. He's been tormenting all the way, all the time that he's been on the pitch. But allies also feel they have to switch something and bring in some fresh legs. So that like for like change. Anapo will not take chances anymore. Yeah. Adibao was just lurking around. Mutalais will be roping in. Abraham Ochiri, he had a decent game against 
the gun cities. Here is Zachary's first touch. Tries to locate Samuel Ama. It's Ama against Bodo. Adebayo! That was close. He took a deflection along the way. And it's a corner for Antalais. Goal kick. It's a goal kick. So it must have deflected off an Antalais player. We'll get to see yeah. it again. My first, that's a lovely touch by the substitute who just got onto the pitch. Zachary makes a brilliant run. Nobody tracking the run. Just ball eludes him and falls to Adebayo. But how is this not a corner kick? Well, quite clearly, this ball came off Kodo. Anafu, I should say. Yes, it came off, came off Anafu. Who was closing in on him. And that was great defending by Anafu. Ra Razak against Asinki. Clever close up play from Frank Asinki. Yeah. Showing great energy in his first season in the Ghanaian Premier League. He joined from a second division. Boka FC in Dansoman. Free kick taken. Oh. Some trouble in the box. It was a corner actually floated in by Entry. Yeah, it was disappointing because the flight of the ball was very decent. I mean, I was calling for someone to attack it. Referee spots an infringement in that box, and the whistle goes. Felix Abuska, he's had an exciting afternoon. Highly impressed with his performance. Yeah. So Abraham Ochre, another skillful youngster. But for a 16-year-old, Abuska have been impressive. Yeah, Trust it's, been, me. it's been an impressive outing for him, Abuska. Ishmael entry, sprinting down the right. Lovely skill from Ishmael. Tries a shot. Go kick. So what was he sitting on the bench for? He kept too long on that bench. Together with Hamon, they brought some vibe and they brought some urgency into this Dwarf's attack. Yeah. Entry there, that's what gets onto the ball, and quite clearly, see what he wants to do. Attack, attacking that defenders of allies, cuts in beautifully and just doesn't get the shots on target. But that was a great play by him. Brought some energy and some great belief into the sides. And it's coming on. You should pay attention to the substitution by both sides. The two teams want to go for this. Very attacking substitution by them. The bio locates Ama. Abanga will look for Mohamed Zakari. Flag stays down. He's onside. Goes in with a first time cross. And Razak. Great sense of awareness. Lovely play from Asinki. This is brilliant from the centre back. So beautiful to see on the eye. Center back so intelligent and so aware of his surroundings and so calm as well. Lovely stuff. Samoa was looking for Seydou. So that was a lovely piece of play there again for Masinki. Take a look at this lovely one. Adebayo was trying to pick out someone Ama. Free kick for Intalais. Where would this decision go? Referee Mac hasn't Aqua. decided yet. And Mohamed Zakari. To 
that is it. They're coming together. The two players right there. Nasty collision. Nasty collision. Place in a call to find out <laughs> when the Dwarves goal is going to come. <laughs> I mean, when it's Dwarves playing, the other game that they really would want to keep an eye on is what is happening when Omina Sharks are playing. Maybe listening to commentary and monitoring other places. Just maybe. Maybe. Sharks are away in Accra with uh, the game against uh, Accra to focus on. Plenty other games for people to monitor. And most of these fans, you know, they turn up at the stadium, they have the teams they support, but they are always interested in what happens to Kotoko and Hearts. No surprises there. <laughs> Two biggest clubs in the country. Some way, somewhere, somebody's affiliated to them, partly. Regardless of who they are supporting Absolutely. at the venue, you find them. Shibua! He manages to keep it in play, but he's lost it eventually, Hammond. Here is Zakari. Gets the throw in off the boot of Saidu Abubakari. It's 70 minutes at the Cape Coast Stadium. It's Dwarfs 0, Inter Ally 0. Chibu has headed down to Asamoa. Zachary steals possession, but Ama is beaten to it. Lovely skill from Hamon. Seydou has been disappointed. Yeah, he has. I mean, not just on that occasion, but throughout the game. It really hasn't happened for him. His touches have not been brilliant. But he's the top car of the club. He's got four goals from the Premier League. That's why he's still on, because the goals can come, no matter how poor he plays. The goals are not coming. Fans of both teams eagerly awaiting when the deadlock will be broken. Costas cross in, headed down by Fad. Lovely play from Asamoa. Final delivery, letting him down. Again, he hangs on to the ball and gives away possession to the disappointment of these fans. He could be giving them something better. Now the game is turned around. It's it's 12 that are you know, piling all the pressure on allies, and allies now sitting a little deeper in their own half, and Adebayo is isolated. It's a free kick pushing by Richard Aquan. Hammond, who is causing a lot of problems since he came in yeah. for Ibushua Dwarfs. I mean, the energy that Hammond and counterparts have brought into this game it's been great i mean how on an entry since coming on they've been playing well and stretching the play there for dwarves dennis costa's free kick oh how did he miss some communication abuna abashi have spoken to chibua he was just around him chibua got ahead but it went too high. Yeah, two players going for the same ball. And you wonder if Abu Nabas present just puts Chibua off a bit. Take a look at that. That was a brilliant ball into that area. Three of them, two of them actually going for that. And it's Abu Naba who finally gets his head on that header. But Chibua was in a better position to finish that off. And that is a huge, huge opportunity there gone for Dwarves. Should have at least hit the target from there. That was a brilliant ball from the skipper, Kosa. Kosa is a graduate from the University of Cape Coast. He actually began playing football for the team in the university. 
UCC youngsters. And there he goes, wins the challenge so beautifully and legitimately. Razak, well, just can be dangerous. Poor pass from Seydou Abubakari again. Again, Razak. I'll not be surprised if he's sacrificed. But the question is whether they have options on the bench. And it's dropped. I mean, too deep for my liking because he should be in and around there. Danger area where he can force issues. He's dropped it somewhere in and around the midfield. Eric Peters who assumed the duty of a ball boy. <laughs> he needs the ball to go back onto the pitch quickly. At the bio again, not Megan Corsa brings him down. Free kick. So just look at the bio here. Yeah. Cosa all over him. Through his That's legs. It. And it just goes through there as if he's not there now. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm an Adam to be watching this and say, after all, I've I wasn't the only one. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've been there before. Every defender's nightmare at the bio. At the bio, Kelsey in is dealt with by Anafo. McAqua. 75 minutes in Cape Coast is goalless between Dwarfs and Inter Allies. The home fans are beginning to get frustrated. But they, they should be frustrated with the way the team has played, especially in attack. But they can also be very happy with the way the defense and goalkeeper Razak have played today. They are the reason why the scoreline is as it is. Zakari. That's some lovely play from Ishmael Enchi. But Desmona Buga will get that no nonsense clearance away. He's doing everything right and causing a lot of problems for Richard Aqua on the right of the entire life defense. What an inclusion. Yeah. And that is every manager's dream that when, a, when there's a player on the bench and players thrown onto the fray, he makes an impact. He makes an impact. And that is what these two substitutions, two substitutes have come on to do. You know, they are stretching their game. Apretune wasn't really doing much on the rings. The fans are charging. They are rooting for a goal as Dennis Cossa lines up for this free kick. Cossa, that was not good from the captain, but this can be dangerous from Ishmael Entry is dealt with. McAqua. That wasn't the best ball in the first place from Kossa. Couldn't even beat his first man. So, when the time comes and you have to sleep, you have to, even when the fans are around you and shouting in the football game. Uh, he can't be bothered. <laughs> You wake up and ask, what was the scoreline? Daddy wants to watch football. I mean, he can't be bothered. At the bio, couldn't quite get it working for him. Here is Razak. Here is Seydou Abubakari. He chose the wrong option. Poor decision. Zakari. Referee plays the advantage, and the young chap wants to go all the way. He's stopped by Kodo, and Mark Aqua will pick it up. He's just not getting it right. Nothing is working for him. It's really shocking why he's been dropped deep into 
to assume almost a midfield role. Because he's not the best passer of the ball. He doesn't have that, that skill set to pick out players. I mean, the player who scored four goals, your top goal scorer, he should be playing closer to the goal, goal area. And not in that midfield role because no way for him. But as it stands now, he's dropped into the midfield. And we have uh, Chebua and Hammond leading the lines there. He hasn't worked so far for Sadi Abukari. Aqua. Kosa. Ishmael Entry. Lovely play from Ishmael Entry. He gives away possession. But the fans are beginning to believe that pass was meant for Ato Hamon. But it had so much weight behind it. But that was going to take something very special to find Hammond. He has, it's, it's been very physical, the game so far. But Hammond, right, right on his bike, once he realizes that he has the opportunity of getting to that. But the space in between the goalkeeper and then the defender is always going to be difficult for him to pick that pass. But it's interesting how Kinsley Bryce's fans have turned up at the stadium while Kinsley himself finds himself on the bench. Yeah. Somebody should tell the coach he has fans in the stadium. Dwarfs again, probing, but the occupy in Christ he caught to the task. But it's also entertaining to see that. So Kinsley is coming in. Yeah. And now the fans. <laughs> there you can see them now. You can see the fans. If you're in the stadium, they are charging and they are bouncing because Braille is going to have the last nine minutes he's a of this game. He's a Cape Coast boy, and so yeah. the fans know. That is strange, really, isn't it? Because you expect the Cape Coast to support dwarves, dwarves, dwarves but, but they are supporting Kingsley Braille. Some way, somehow, they are supporting that one man, Braille. It's beautiful. Don't you love the game? The game of football. That's Lovely. Interesting. But if in Thailand, we're not playing here, and it was against any other team Dwarfs were facing, they would have been supporting Dwarfs. Absolutely. That's one Abuga, heckling Mac Aqua all afternoon. There's one thing that dwarves have really done well with or at. Then it's keeping Adebayo quiet in the second half. And that is because Kosa and a handful have really kept an eye on him. Looks like Samuel Ama will make way for Kingsley Braille, like for like substitution, but yeah. Ama provides Intalais with some great confidence anytime he's played. He's got four goals in the Premier League. That's the moment. That's the time. So this is the time. The, the fans get to see Kingsley Braille. There you see them. Braille 22. He's out for Samuel Ama. Ama has four goals in the Premier League. He makes way for Kingsley Braille. So the friends of Braille are here in their numbers. Braille has got the next seven minutes to prove a point. Yeah, and now he has to go on and perform. What a story this would be. Football keeps writing scripts that you can never really understand. Is it going to be one of those today? A few minutes to go, we shall see. And Afu puts one through, looking for Hamon. Hamon is giving Fad Ibrahim a difficult time since he came in. Here is Barrier. He touches, looking for space. 
so he gives away possession cheaply, Brian. But it's early days to start hitting at him. Yeah, yeah, early days. I mean, the way he attacked the ball was great, with great energy, just couldn't pick out the pass accurately. Michael Asamoa. Abukari Seidu is offside. The fans are complaining about Seydou, not too happy with how he's performed. Kosa. Aqua Abu Naba thought he could have done the simple things trap it down locate somebody in the box rather than the spectacular yeah I'm not sure what he was trying to do that it trying to slice out the ball to the far post and see if someone was going to get onto it and maybe try to score from there it didn't work. Whatever he was thinking, it didn't work. He already has one goal in the Premier League this term. He's got an awesome goal against Jules FC. Abu Naba Jr. Dennis Kosa. Richard Aqua went in. Legitimately, and the Dwarfs winger, Hamon, felt it should have been a foul. As Ishmael. Yeah, nothing nothing Ishmael foul Enchi, in that one. He wasn't foul. Nothing. Kodo. It must be said that the quality of football we've seen today has been pleasing. You know, misplaced passes here and there, but overall it's been good. And I can tell you that there's one factor to it. This is about the best pitch in the country at the moment. No wonder the Black Stars will be playing here in their next AFCON qualifier. Here is Mohamed Zakari to Richard Aqua. He's got the Bayon nearby. He decides to go by himself. He gets a corner. Yes, it's a corner for Inter Allies. for Inter Allies. Victorian Adebayo has the ball. You know, attendance is highly impressive at this venue for Dwarfs. It's been massive. team who are not doing so well in the Premier League. It's been massive, very impressive. Adebayo kills one in. That was straight and direct to goalkeeper Issa Razak. It won't trouble him after those decent saves he's made. Don't expect him to concede right away from the corners. Kosa has lost it out. It's at the bio now. He gave the ball to Desmond Abuga. Abuga to Kinsley Braille. Oh, lovely pass from Kinsley Braille. He gets to Abraham Archery. That's childish. <laughs> And very immature from Ochiri, one of the graduates from the Cedar Stars Academy, the feeder team of Inter Allies. Yeah, Abraham Ochiri had so much time, not, not too sure what he wanted to do there. I mean, Barry offered him an out there, he didn't go for it, he was trying to weave through. Then lose his position in what could have been a very promising attacking move. He spoke about the spectatorship and it's been incredible. 
89 minutes and there's a likelihood we'll be doing three minutes of stoppage time here in Cape Coast as Dwarves chase their fourth win of the Premier League season. Asam West delivery dealt with by goalkeeper Ayn Kraya is Kosa. Fine opportunity for Dwarves. Ato Hammond. That was lowly dri driven by Hammond. That was a foul there, lovely. We're trying to spin around and turn around this plan there. Asamoah. Two minutes of additional time. There is Ohinia Samoa. He goes down. It won't pass for a penalty. No questions about that. Here's Brian against Aqua. Brian skips past Aqua. And Kodo to the rescue of Dwarves. Oh, that was timely from Kodo. Got Brian's fans now, really. I take a look at the pace. He's beating his man to that one. Always going to get there before him because he's got so much pace. He's good. A Brian. What a lovely stop it was. Mohamed Zakari. Tumbles over. It will go for a foul in the throwing. Fad Ibrahim. Now, this is somehow controversial. It's debatable. Very debatable. Especially after what Razak has done for the game for. Brilliant on no. Arsenal. Yeah, the reason why no goals have come. It got to a point and it was in Tarlite versus Issa Razak. He answered all those questions. One minute of stoppage time. Done. This can be dangerous. Here is Martin Chimua. Save Abu Bakari. That sums up his disappointing and frustrating afternoon. Unpardonable for a striker at this stage. Four goals in the Premier League, you expect him to do better, Abu Bakari. Yeah, you expect him to do far better than that. But really, like you said, the sums up this afternoon. He's been very, very poor today. He's about. I, I don't like picking on players, but it's difficult not to really say this. Even a poorest player on the pitch, if you like. It's had a very, very difficult afternoon. Bad day at the office for yeah. Abu Bakari Seydou. I'm sure he will see better days, but just not today. It's not happened for him. Anato has had a better of Adebayo in this second half. Fine opportunity for Ahinkra to go down. But Mubarak, the referee won't have any of that. He's asked him to quickly get up on his feet. Yeah, he's going with the game. Just a few seconds to go. Take the whistle to his mouth. And there the whistle go. That's the end of the game here. At the Cape Coast Sports Stadium, Ebuzia Dwarf has failed to win, and it's over. Adebayo has failed to score, and its allies will be happy with a the point they picked up here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. Yeah, a very, very brilliant game of football by the two sides. We've enjoyed it, and for Dwarfs, it's something for them to build on. And for allies, it's one point picked away from home. So the entire fans, they will enjoy the fans from the Braille end. Friends of Braille. Wow. Yeah. It's some kind of some kind of a pitch invasion. It pitch is. invasion by the friends of Braille. Listen, we love to see the fans come to the stadium and do what they love to do, but not this. I well, them this. it's over here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. Full-time scores, uh, Dwarfs 0, 
Inter Allies zero. The second half got underway with both teams eager to cancel out each other. And it was Inter Allies who got his first opportunity. Adebayo stopped by Razak. The rebound again flying over the top of the goalpost. Yeah. But this was a clear goal scoring opportunity for Adebayo. Is that is this second time that lets him down? Just couldn't get that ball on his right foot. On his left foot, as you say. On his right, the weaker foot. Couldn't beat Razak from there. No second time of asking and over this the bar. free kick was dealt with not appropriately the first time. Yeah. But the second reaction from Issa Razak, always fantastic. Always fantastic. His reaction is great. It's agile and it's great to see. They kept asking questions, and at the bio, with this opportunity again, it took a deflection off one of the defenders, and it yeah. looks like it was an awful. Yeah. Surprisingly, they there, didn't, didn't go out for a corner. Absolutely, but I'm sure right, right here from here, you would have thought that Razak was going to get to that. Well, it's difficult to say, but he was judging that right. So the inclusion of Hammond and then Enchi brought some vibrancy, but it couldn't pay off. Yeah, they played well. They made a huge claim for starting places in this very team, coming on off the bench. They did inject a lot of power and pace. So look at this free kick from Corsa and this header, Abu Naba and then Chibua, lack of communication. Yeah. But that delivery from Captain Nkrumah Corsa was sweet. Yeah, it was just a bit of communication between Kos, between Abu Naba and Chibua would have given them the goal. It's over here in Cape Coast. Ebusuya Dwarfs have failed to win at home. It's goalless. Full time scores. Dwarfs zero. Intali zero. 50% possession apiece. Seven shots on goal from Inter Allies. Two corners and three for Dwarfs. One yellow card for Dwarfs. Two offsides. Dwarfs, one Inter Allies. Fouls committed 19 apiece. Final score Dwarfs zero. Inter Allies zero to Eli Kondo for post-match interviews. So here with me at the pitch side, I would be man of the match for today, Ibrahim. Now, good performance from your side today, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to end your win. What do you make of that today? Um, I think uh, we're here to win our first game. You know, this is my first match, and I think the performance was very good today. So I think, um, you know, we are looking ahead for half match now, because um, unfortunately, we were we're looking for a win today and you know we, we, we drew so we think uh, we are gonna focus on the next game yeah and what did the coach tell you uh, before kickoff that got you the best out of you yeah he said we, we should focus and you know we should play hard because uh, if you are going for our away game it's not easy so we, we should you know we should go all out well, congratulations on your performance thank you so Ibrahim, man of the match for today, uh, good performance. Unfortunately, uh, his left position wasn't able to get that deserved win they were hoping for. But well, this coach should be okay, I guess. Uh, you were actually expecting to draw this. A win was something you're looking after, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. What do you make of that today? Well, it's it's a very it, it's been a very tough game. Um, we actually came in with the intent of winning, but it looks like the potency up front wasn't as sharp as I expected my strikers. Uh, uh, to you know, behave in such a match. It looks like they were too sluggish and lethargic at goal. They were not actually pushing the way we wanted them to push forward. And so that allowed the game to end in a draw. I told you we were going to need uh, Adebayo in the bad, and you saw it. He was out of the game. I had a plan for him, and so we had the advantage of pushing forward to score. But unfortunately, my boys too were so sluggish. I don't know, my strikers, I don't know. But this is what we came to meet. The window will open, we'll look out for, you know, very potent strikers, very, uh, 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 you know, aggressive ones, of course, so that we at least beef up the team. It's not all lost. We've won a point here. It's, it's better than not picking a point at all. So I think we will we, we accept it. It's, it's been a very hard fought battle. Uh, Inter Allies came in very strongly, and we also did our best. And you saw we played very well. They also played very well. But fortunately or unfortunately, there weren't any goals in the match. Thank you very much. We shall go best. Thank you very much, too. And, and that, that's the coach for uh, Dwarves there. Well, I would be to local here uh, for Inter Allies. Now, would you say this was a result you're looking forward to? Well, that wasn't the result, but we have to take it in good faith. Mm. We, we wanted to pick up the three points, but it didn't, it didn't happen that way. Mm. Uh, it looks like Adebayo didn't have his game today. Um, your, your strikers were actually uh, marked out of, of play today. What, what do you think really happened up front there today for you? Well, before the start of the game, something happened on the blind side of the, the whole situation. It's like they put some con concussion on him, and, and then he was, was sort of fled up before the game. 
So I think he's also affected him on the field of play. But on the whole, he played what he did what he, was, he could have done. And then we, at least the draw also is a result of what has happened today. Wish you the best going forward. Thank you very much. So there you had it for yourself. It's all over here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium in Cape Coast. Both teams walking away with a point each, uh, shared spoils here. And that's how it's happened here. Over to you in the studios. Change of pleasantries at the bio is fired up. He's so furious. Game underway. Bubari gets uh, the power in that. Lovely play here is Amaz. Amaz with a power drive.